is a piece I did some years ago. It's called Emotional Wallpaper. And those are all the emotions, or most of them, uh, in alphabetical order uh, in three different languages. And uh, of course, they, uh, uh, as you know, emotions are like uh, the, you know, uh, we have words for emotions to, as a kind of a currency to, uh, for our exchange between I feel like this and this. And um, uh, so I was really interested in when, when this possibility came up of uh, putting uh, this, uh, uh, covering these three columns with emotions in three different languages. Uh, and um, so there would be like a uh, Icelandic, Japan a Japanese, and, and, and English uh, dialogue. Of course, also like uh, they're in di different uh, alphabetical order uh, following the language. The, the original idea actually came from. Uh, uh, like a uh, self-help, uh, like a brochure I, I, I saw, like there was these um, groups of emotions, like uh, we are angry or hungry or uh, tired, but there were these like uh, different uh, su subtle emotions related to these basic emotions we have. There are like five emotions we go through every day, but there are a lot of branches. So what I, I, I immediately, I'm very inspired by the everyday, and I, I saw that, uh, that this was a piece and um, hidden in this, this brochure. So what I did, I put, take, took all the emotions out of the brochure uh, and uh, put them into alphabetical order. And, um, and I was very happy and content uh, with having them on the same place. And uh, so it's, it's, it's like a... Um, yeah, I could talk endlessly about this. I think everyone experiences it its own way, you know, standing in front of English. Most of us are here maybe, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to speaking two languages at least. So, but, you know, English is like, a, so for some of us, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a native language and other it's like a foreign language, but still we understand. So it's like, it's about the translation, translating, and of course, also like it, the emotions are are uh, are uh, holding the space that others that will fall on us in the columns. Like we, when we, we are out out of emotions, we we fall on the floor. This piece is called Arctic Fruits, and it's a, a documentary um, work about the the only fruits that grow in Iceland, and those are the. Of course, the, the Christmas lights, which the Icelanders put up in their trees in their gardens around Christmas time to, to fight the darkness. And um, so it, it, it gives a little bit of light in, in, and color in, in, into, their, into their lives um, in, the, in the heart of, heart of the darkness in, in, in December and, and, and January. And this is actually an ongoing piece. I've been and I started it uh, at the turn of the millennium in 1999, 2000, and uh, so I, I had always new um, images of different uh, installations. Because I, I find also in this piece, uh, uh, this this is a very typical piece by me in the sense of it, how it's inspired by the everyday. It's a I like the, the borderline between the, we were talking, uh, the, the private art and public art, and it's uh, really on the border of official sculpt sculpture installation and a very intimate. It's like um, the, the kind of a cell portraits of the people living in the houses. And, and talking about myself, uh, I can also uh, tell you that uh, this is probably the first installation I did when I was a child. I was always asked as the oldest son in the family to put up the Christmas, climb the tree and put up the Christmas trees before Christmas. So it has this um, autobiographical, autobiographical references as well. And uh, but as I told you earlier on, it's like uh, I'm, I'm inspired by many things at the same time and uh, and work in uh, like many many different media and. Uh, as we, as you can see here in, in this show.
And this piece is actually uh, inside this, uh, what do you call it, uh, copper? Or plus closet. Plus yeah. So uh, please enter carefully one slash two at a time. And it's called uh, dark lamp. And uh, some of you have already experienced it. It's a, I look at it as an invention. I made a new invention, like uh, Edison with a light bulb. But it's, a, it's called dark lamp. And you will just see how it works. And, uh, and uh, this piece, uh, it has to be shown uh, in, in total darkness. And uh, so I'm very uh, uh, excited when I come to uh, arrive to, to a place to install my pieces, uh, uh, to find a, a spot which is like a little bit like um, isolated, where I, uh, I have, have done different sound pieces and they are, uh, I put them in, 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 in some kind of corner, <coughs> like out of the traditional or the official uh, space, because I think it's like, a, it's also, a think about, uh, I'm also very considered about personal experience, that we have all our like um, emotional and uh, intellectual, intellectual uh, luggage, like school children walking with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, in a way, like, like this kind of a thing that the, the, the visitor to a show goes out of the official space and experiences it individually or alone. So it's uh, <coughs> on this, uh, in this kind of twilight, in this twilight song, and uh, it is. Um, so when I when I've, uh, I hadn't been here for more than maybe five minutes when I saw this the, this space here, and I was very very happy to to, this, to, to be able to put this piece there, and uh, and then we just installed it, and and and, and, and I find it's very really, it's very really close. So it's very very kind of. It's a dark room and also very closed. It's like for one or two persons. And uh, then, like, uh, uh, it's a very phys physical piece and makes many references to different artistical or, or spatial or architectural pieces. But, uh, but I was also like very, uh, when someone was coming out of it uh, yesterday, and I, then I thought about my, um, one of my favorite uh, writers, like Murakami. Japanese writer. And I found this kind of a uh, nice moment that he is like talking. People disappear into walls and or fall into fountains, like uh, invisible fountains. So it is in a way like a, you know, there are these like uh, layers which add up with uh, with time or with, uh, the context. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it, uh, yeah. The, the piece is called Dark Lamp, and it's um, there are uh, uh, between 100 and 200 uh, colors in the in the piece, and they are like dif different uh, colors of the whole world. And um, there's this um, this woman who is reciting colors. So it's um, yeah. So anyway, it's an experience. It's a, it's a kind of it's a kind of a synesthetic. It's a, it's a it's a piece which takes place between the senses, between the ears and the eyes. But the, the ears and the eyes they are on the same level on the head. And um, so uh, so one one guest yesterday. I found it a little bit like post-apocalyptic piece, <laughs> like that, just like <coughs> the end, only in the memory language was left. 